Esoterica, the podcast, where we discuss the obscure, offbeat, and unusual. I'm Chris Schultz. And I'm Aaron Christian. Today's episode is brought to us by Tchotchke's Restaurants. Now featuring new apps, we have shrimp poppers, pizza shooters, and extreme fajitas. Tchotchke's, come for the food, stay for the flair. So, what's so, our album today, Aaron? Well, got a special treat, right? I do have a special treat. So today we are going to be listening to Musique pour Supermarche, or Music for Supermarkets, by a French EDM artist, I guess artist, composer, person, Jean-Michel Jarry. Now, this oh, ho, ho, record, ho. right? Ho, ho. This record, only a single copy was pressed and distributed, and the master plates were deliberately destroyed. Um, so it was created for a supermarket theme exhibit uh, called the Arumbe Show. Probably butchered that pronunciation, so if you're French, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he, he made this music for the supermarket themed exhibit. And yeah, so there's, I think there's eight different tracks on this thing. And the only place you can find them, because the master plates were burned and the, uh, what's it called? vinyl itself was sold was a bootlegged am radio broadcast of the record being played Played how esoteric can you get on radio luxembourg no less exactly so the the only copy in what we're listening to is a a pirated version broadcast on am radio uh and that's it yeah and in fact jury introduced the playback with the words pirates moi which is pirate me uh, and multiple bootlegs of that radio broadcast exist. All right. So we want to uh, dive right in? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. So I don't know if these have names. I guess this is track one. Yeah, okay, part one. We'll roll with it. All right, I may just blow my wad on talking about this first track because I got a lot of thoughts. Okay. So first of all, we, it started off with that sort of ambient sound of it sounded like a crowded supermarket and the yeah. music was in the background. Reminds me of, and, and now I'm wondering if uh, there was a inspiration here. The Residents uh, had an American composer series they did in the mid-80s, early 80s, and they have an album called Hank, Stars and Hank Forever. One side is covers of Hank Williams. The other side is covers of Sousa songs. And what they do with the Sousa songs is when it first comes in, there's the ambient sound of a parade, like people on the sidewalk and you know, oh, that's cool. other noises. And then you hear, it sounds like the marching band is coming down the street and getting mm-hmm. closer and closer and closer. And then it goes into some really bizarre <laughs> atonal uh, renditions of Sousa songs. So it kind of reminded me of that, where it starts off with the ambient sound and then goes into the music. Mm. So that was cool. And uh, it also um, sounded to me like a soundtrack of Marty the Robot going on a rampage. <laughs> Just the day he switches yeah. from helpful to kill. I feel like this could be like, you know, a, uh, the mother of... A family going out and and going getting groceries in like a 1980s 1990s coming of age film you know like <laughs> like a like, montage yeah like this is the it's the beginning of the movie and like she's shopping in the stores dun, 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 and she's just buying everything comes back and then the music ends and then like the dog runs up and starts wagging its tail wow yeah that's cool i could totally see that <laughs> i was kind of picturing like being angry shopping and like drifting when you turn in the aisles you see, I think this is the beauty of this. It could go either way. <laughs> right. You've either gotten a super angry supermarket song yeah. or a uh, coming-of-age teen film. Maybe I just have issues about going to the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> it could be me. Oh, my gosh. Well, let's listen to part two. you seen the spongebob movie yes i have so you know how the basic plot of that 
it shouldn't really be a spoiler to anybody, is <laughs> that, you know, Plankton's trying to, he's doing Plan Z because he thought there was only A through Y. And Plan Z is like, takes control of everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is the soundtrack to that. Yeah, the like little... like everyone's got the, the plankton. Hmm. I it, and it's a similar vein to what I like going back to Marty going rogue. I, I like pictured this the sound of like him, like picture picture your supermarket, mm-hmm. like stop and shop. the The lights are blinking on and off, and there's like smoke in the aisles, and then you just see the LED on Marty as he's coming down. He's going red. It's yeah, really and maybe he zaps for, out. For those of you that may not have a stop and shop or giant stores near you, <laughs> Marty is a robot that doesn't clean but detects messes and lets them know they need to be, get cleaned. Yes, he's an autonomous uh, robot. He's just a looks like a large gray. Yeah, Google obelisk. Google stop and shop Marty, and that'll help. But yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't really do anything. It's kind of like Indiana Jones in the first movie. He doesn't add anything to the plot. What? Literally, think about it from start to finish. Right? Yeah. What were the Germans trying to do in the first movie? Find the Ark. Yeah, and do what with it? Use it as a super weapon. Give it to Hitler. All right, and they and they they took it right and everything at the end. Yeah. What did they do at the end of the movie? They opened it. Yeah. And they Indiana Jones didn't stop him. What do you do? He added nothing to the plot. Can't fight me on that one. Oof, I feel like I need to, but I feel like you need to. But I'm <laughs> That's like a whole other. It is. It is. Um, so, maybe. anyways, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I have more thoughts on Marty, but we have a whole episode to fill. So I'll. I'll yeah, it I'll... Sounds like Marty is going to be a theme here. Yeah. Part three. <laughs> So also sort of I, I don't want to shop in the supermarket, I think is the No. Really what I want to say. What I said so Ray's theme from uh the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. The do 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 Oh yeah. And it kinda had like a if you were to play it on a xylophone vibe, like I can I uh, totally totally get that. Yeah, yeah. So it was interesting. Um, backsliding to the, my comments from the first song, the Residence album Stars and Hank Forever, uh, released in 1986. Oh, hmm. maybe it's the other way around because this was 1983. Yeah. And I mean, being an esoteric band themselves, they're, they are into some, they're like a lot of their influences are really like off the map stuff. Right. Uh, I would not be surprised. Maybe, um, if we manage to get Homer on again, um, we can drop that and just say, Hey, are you familiar with? Jean Michel Jarre. Might be worth it. Might be worth it. All right. Next track. Part four. Okay, before we go any further, I want to take a minute to talk about the awesome folks at Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way. In fact, it's the way that we make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast. Best part, no minimum listenership. Ooh. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. It's so cool. I we just we found the service. We started using it. We're making podcasts. Yeah, making podcasts, making money, having a good time. So listen, you want to get you out there. You want to be heard. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor.fm to get started. Thank you. So it was interesting that that track had a lot more um, ambient sound in it. Yeah, it sounded like it was actually in the supermarket. So interesting thing, I, I was trying to wrap my head around how exactly this concept came to be. And I'm reading this excellent article on Medium, which I will link uh, on when we put the post up about this. So Jarret was 
asked by some friends to create music for an art exhibit about supermarkets. Sort of, I guess, going with the Andy Warhol theme, the idea of the art exhibit was to take items from a supermarket and present them in a different light Mm -hmm. uh, and then auction them off. So he agreed to make background music for it. And um, partway through the process of creating the music, it occurred to him that the music used to present art, art objects was also an exhibit item in of itself. Right. So that was the genesis for the idea of releasing an album and only making a single copy because the items that were being presented as art and auctioned off, only one person's getting it. So he sort of did the same thing with the music. So that's hmm. kind of cool way to get to where he got to, I guess. Now, is this the first record we listened to that is exclusively instrumental? Uh, the only other one that we've listened to is the Moog one, the uh, In Sounds from Way Out. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. And that's probably similar to this. In, and so, in a sense. and one of those guys was French. Uh, there was Kingsley and, I'm going to forget. Uh, Perry? Perry, yeah. And, and Perry was French. Mm-hmm. A lot of really strange experimental um, electronic music came out of um, France in, between 60s and 80s. Hmm. Um, I, I have to say, like, I'm making a gross generalization here, but. A lot of really kind of cool, weird music has come out of France. So, yeah, um, go, <laughs> go France. Well, why don't we listen to part five? Part five. <laughs> I'm really kind of digging this album. You know, that track made me hate it a little bit because it was the same thing for four minutes. Yeah. And uh, I have a headache. I uh, really wouldn't want to be shopping in the supermarket that's playing this. Although I'll say this. So the, the beginning of the track, there was something about the music that reminded me. And I posted this on our Facebook page a while ago. Somebody found a box full of Kmart tapes, the cassette tapes of the music and commercials they played at Kmart, Mm -hmm. and he uploaded them all, like the entire catalog. It's all, if you were in a Kmart from like maybe 1978 through the early 90s, um, all whatever you heard is on this website. Um, And it just reminded me of that for some reason. There was was something about the music that that reminded me of somebody talking, like an ad, so... Mm. Um, I'll post that again um, when this comes out as a reminder. But yeah, you, listeners, if you want to feel that feeling of nostalgia of being in a in a Kmart, uh, it's totally worth listening to. Attention, Kmart shoppers! There's a blue light special in housewares. All right. Um, now f- to continue the headache, part six. Yeah, that just that made me sleepy. Yeah, <laughs> I was trancy. Um, so interesting. I, I'm reading through this article on oh Medium. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> reading through this article on Medium about the album, and um, so as we mentioned before, that there was only one actual copy made, and it was auctioned off. So it ended up going for um, sixty nine thousand francs, which was equivalent to nine thousand uh, dollars American back then. And it went to an aged uh, Monsignor who had woken up after a long coma due to a car accident. So apparently this guy was in a coma because he's in a car accident. And when he woke up, the radio had been playing a, a Jade song um, from 1981. Hmm. So he felt um, he wanted to express his reverence to um, the creator. And so he was the one that bought wow. one copy of the album. So that's a cool story in of itself. Hmm. 
It's esoteric. Very. What part are we on now? Is it seven? <laughs> Maybe. I, we are. We are. I fell asleep, so I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Part seven. That ended in a cacophony. <laughs> what a word. It's like, I think it's the spiritual opposite of sympathy. Uh, symphony. Sympathy. Symphony, cacophony. I want to bet that he was like, all right, I tried really hard in the beginning half. Now I don't care. So <laughs> so the rest of it's just the same thing over and over and over again for like four or five minutes. And I really don't like that. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So you have music that's like, I know a lot of um, EDM is sort of trancey mm-hmm. and like that, that's the objective behind yes. it. Yes. Right. So to have something that's, that's trancey, but also makes you uncomfortable, it's like not pleasant to listen to right. is an interesting concept. Like you're intentionally making people, eh, which I like difficult music. Making people, uh-huh. Yeah, I kind of like that. Like I, you know, f- to, in defense of myself, I do like music that is that is pleasing and relaxing and nice. But I also like stuff that's challenging, forces you to listen to it because it makes me pay attention. You know, I'm like, music is never challenging. It's never <laughs> it's never a chore to li- Well, it is right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've listened to music that even I like. I, I love the residents. Obviously, and they they've been around for forty some years, so they have. There are albums that I enjoy listening to and will go back to, and there are albums that I really like but will probably never listen to again because they were not pleasant to listen to. They were challenging, but I like what they were, where they yeah, were going. Like Wormwood, that. I will not listen to that out of leisure. Ever. <laughs> I I do occasionally listen to that out of uh, out of leisure, um, but they they did some um, like the Voice of Midnight, some storytelling during their storytelling era that I really like, and I like the stories, but it's not something that I want to sit down and listen to. Yeah. Well, we're on the last part of this album, thank God. <laughs> uh, part eight. Let's give it a small run YouTube, so it's not really a spin anymore. We'll give it a press of the space bar. So this last track started like the beginning of it with that uh, supermarket noise again, Mm. and then became very um, boring very quickly. Really? So, and I think they mentioned this in the Medium article. This is one of those where probably the sound, the the actual music on the album is less important than the, the, the point. Right. Or the story behind. It's a work of art. It is. It is. And I think that's the cool thing about this esoteric album is that it has nothing to do with the content. It's not that the music itself is necessarily weird. I mean, EDM is EDM. It is what it is. Uh, But it's the story and the message and what goes along with it. And I think that's that's an important thing to just keep in mind for your life. Yeah. Now, having said that, if anybody um, follows us on our YouTube channel, and I beg you to please subscribe if you do. Um, whenever we we post a video that we put together of an interview, uh, we open with the Esoterica theme, and for the closing music, I always use Maxine by Frank and Clyde because um, there's no copyright on that. I'm thinking I might start incorporating some of um, music for supermarkets in there because <laughs> it's good. Cl- it's you know it's good credit music I guess to play over credits. Where's the coming of age theme when we need it? Right. And um, so off off mic, um, as one, after we've wrapped up this episode, I am going to make Aaron listen to uh, apparently a number of the tracks on this album actually did appear on other works. Uh, Jarre's next album, uh, he 
Uh, it was called Rendezvous and included um, several tracks from this. And one of the parts, uh, which is the one I'm going to make them listen to, I think track five, uh, somebody added nonsensical lyrics to in a non-existent language, which sort of reminiscent of several species of small furry animals alone in a cave. No, no. Grooving in a pig. No, no, all of that wrong. Several species of small furry animals gathered together in a cave and grooving with a pig. Okay, so not all wrong, but mostly wrong. Mostly wrong. Um, And I've always been a fan of the part where Roger just comes in screaming that... um, nonsensical and the wind cried manic which i think on genius they somebody actually wrote down yeah i think so Hmm. i think we looked that up recently yeah yeah that's what so um that's songs for supermarket music for supermarkets music for supermarket music for supermarsh supermarsh manger supermarsh manger so what's on deck coming up let me take a look We've we should changed. have been prepared. Yeah, we should, well, we change things around uh, every now and then. So normally, oh, so next week uh, we have another um, exciting interview, and this one is actually uh, really, really cool. Uh, we're going to be discussing "Dope Humor of the '70s," which is a new album of unreleased material coming out from Firesign Theater. Uh, David Osman, one of the original members of Firesign Theater, is going to be joining us to talk about that. So. We're pretty excited. Yeah, that's going to be a blast. Yeah. And uh, that, um, that's next week. Yeah. Visit esotericofthepodcast.com for all your esoteric needs, whether it be a Esoteric of the Podcast t-shirt, all of our content, whether it be video and or audio, all of our famous folk series, and, you know, everything like that. Esoterica. And uh, please follow, uh, subscribe on uh, YouTube. Yeah, follow us on the the Twitter, the Instagram, <laughs> the, the book face. Yeah, we post a, a good amount of stuff on IG. I'm not using Twitter as much, but um, definitely follow us. Check us out. Um, let us know you love us because we crave um, ador- attention. We're attention horse. I was going to say adoration, but I wouldn't go that far. But we, we do crave attention. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we want to be validated. Validate us, and we'll validate your parking. Until next time, stay in the dark.